let's get rid of the starter code for a fresh start. The first thing that I want to show you is to see how we can load a JavaScript variable onto the DOM, which is sometimes called as data binding. It is very simple. Let's create a variable called ABC. And let's say I have an H1 here in this component. If I want to load the variable ABC into the H1, we simply need to put a curly braces and chuck in the variable name. That's it. The syntax is exactly that simple. So in React, whenever you want to run JavaScript code inside the DOM, we simply need to surround our JavaScript code with curly braces. All right, let's run our app. We'll go to our terminal and type in npm run dev. And now in the browser, we see a heading with the value of our variable ABC. Isn't that neat? With JSX, React makes it super simple for us to combine JavaScript code and HTML. And since we're using JSX, we could also store a HTML element in a JavaScript variable. I'll show you what I mean. Let's create a new variable called paragraph. And the value of it is a p tag and with ABC as its content. And now I'll load the paragraph variable directly underneath our h1. And there we go. It works. And again, just to emphasize this, JSX makes it possible for us to define HTML element as a variable. How cool is this? And imagine what you can do with this feature. This is extremely powerful and we'll be definitely using it later on in the series. Next, I want to introduce you to the concept of reactive variables and state. A reactive variable is a special kind of variable that will update the DOM whenever it is changed. Let me show you an example to illustrate this. Let's consider this scenario. I'm going to change my ABC variable into a let variable. And then I'm going to call a set timeout function to change ABC into 456 after 2 seconds. Now what do you think will happen after 2 seconds inside the DOM? Currently in our HTML, we are binding the variable ABC to the H1 and the P tag. Since after 2 seconds, the value of ABC will change, would I still see 1 to 3 or do I see 456? Think about it for a few seconds. Some of you would think that we will see 456, right? Well, let's find out. I'll show you the browser again, and we see 1, 2, 3. 2 seconds has long passed, and we still see 1, 2, 3 in the DOM. If you don't believe me, I'll call a console log in a set timeout function to prove that it is indeed running. And I'm going to go ahead and refresh the page. Let's wait for 2 seconds, and we see set timeout printed out in the console while the DOM remains the same. So what the hell is happening here? Why isn't the DOM update to the latest ABC value? Well, the answer is because ABC is not a reactive variable. It is just a plain and normal JavaScript variable. In other words, if we update a normal JavaScript variable, it will not update or re-render the DOM and therefore will not see our changes inside the DOM. So what's the solution for this? The answer is simple. We just need to create a reactive variable for ABC instead of a normal JavaScript variable. Let me show you how to create a reactive variable now. To do that, we need to use the useState function provided by React. Just remember to import it from the React library. useState is one of the many so-called hook functions provided by React. A hook is defined as a function that will be triggered whenever an event happens. Let's look at how we can use the useState function before we elaborate more on the topic of hook function. So essentially, the useState functions allow us to create a reactive variable. It will accept one argument, which is the initial value of our reactive variable, and it will return us an array that contains two elements. I'm using array destructuring here. So the first element is our reactive variable itself, and the second element is a setter function for us to set the value of our reactive variable if we ever want to change it. And now you might be wondering, why do we need a setter function to change the reactive variable? Why can't we just change the variable itself, just like normal JavaScript? Well, the answer of this question is closely related to the nature of hook. Remember what I said just now, hook is a function that will be triggered whenever an event happens. So when we want to change the value of ABC, we want React to re-render the DOM. Calling the setABC setter function will trigger React's internal hook functions to re-render the DOM. In other words, if you just change the variable ABC itself, React's internal hooks will not be triggered and therefore the DOM may not be re-rendered correctly. So when we talked about the React hook functions like useState and the other ones in the future, 
you need to understand that these functions are used to create some sort of values or functions that will trigger React's internal hook functions so that React can re-render the DOM. Anyway, let's see how we can change the value of ABC. So rather than changing the variable ABC directly, we need to call the setABC function and pass in the new value. And now take a look at the DOM. The latest value of ABC is now reflected in the DOM when we're using the setter function. If you don't believe me, I'll refresh the page and we get 456 after 2 seconds. Now before we end the lesson, I do want to clarify that the term state is a jargon which means data. And to simplify, you can think of state as variables that can be changed. Alright, key takeaways for this lesson. Data binding means to bind JavaScript variables into the HTML directly. Reactive variables will get React to re-render the DOM when they are updated and JSX allow us to store HTML elements to a variable. Hooks are functions that are triggered when an event happens and the useState function is a React hook that allows us to create reactive variables. That's it for now and I'll see you again in the next video. If you enjoyed the content of this video, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe and the bell icon for more content to come. It will really help me out. Thanks for your support.